Merry Christmas. Yes. I'm very excited about Christmas, I am, um, as you can see. I am. Um... <laughs> I don't want to brag, but um, I'm nailing shopping at the moment. I've got a new debit card. Yeah, 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 right to woo, yeah, one of the old uh, touchy-downy, uh, the old touch... If you haven't got one of these, you haven't lived. Oh, my... <laughs> Never do you feel so smug in your life. <laughs> well, there you go. How would you like to pay? Just have, mate. See you later. <laughs> Why am I off? The future. <laughs> Why do you give me a call when you get that captain checkbook? Thing is, you get used to the touchdown debit card, you go somewhere that doesn't have that, you can't believe your ears. Do you want to just put in your PIN number? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you expect me to stand here for four seconds... <laughs> ..pushing buttons? <laughs> what is this, a Victorian workhouse? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, pret a -Mandre, no! <laughs> the worst is when you think they've got the touchdown debit card, but they haven't. You look like you've never used a debit card... <laughs> ..before in your life. How would you like to pay? You're just going... <laughs> Are you having a breakdown? <laughs> I hate it when they have the terminal, they have to ask for your permission. Do you mind if I just touch it down? Yeah, I couldn't give a shit, mate. <laughs> I trust you that you're not going to go, do you mind if I just touch it down? £4,000, unlucky, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy your Twix. <laughs> Christmas is good, though, isn't it? As a kid, it's good. As an adult, ruined. It is. It's not as good. No, the first day you realise Christmas will never be the same again is the first time you're entered into office secret Santa. That is a depressing day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just pick a name out the hat and uh, get them a present, maximum £10. Oh, thank God you told me. Because <laughs> I was going to get Jean from HR a hovercraft. <laughs> yeah, keep your eyes closed, Jean. I hope I haven't overspent. I'll just reverse it into the marina. <laughs> just reverse it into the marina and you can unpack it. <laughs> So it was more exciting when you were a kid. It was the only festival I looked forward to, really, because at my school we only had that and Harvest Festival. Well, yeah, that's the reaction it should get. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm remembering this festival right. Is this right? Once a year at the time of the harvest, we'd bring in tins of food <laughs> and we'd give to the local old people. <laughs> Basically, we'd celebrate the harvest by giving old people food that was going to last longer than they did. <laughs> Being a race against time against a tin of plum tomatoes. <laughs> Always things that's never had anything to do with the harvest. Who has ever harvested spam? <laughs> but I, I, I go home for Christmas. I go home to Devon. It's a, it's a long way to go. I got the sleeper train home last year. Do not ever get the sleeper train for Christmas or not for Christmas. It should be called the seven hours awake, absolutely livid train. I... <laughs> If you haven't got a sleeper train, um, what, what, I, do not get it on your own. I had to go and buy my ticket. I, I got, was getting my ticket. He said, so it costs this much. Or, um, this was the question. He said, would you like to save £20 by sharing your compartment with a stranger? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I would pay my life savings to avoid such a fate. Because <laughs> the best case scenario there is I'm asleep when he kills me. <laughs> I say no one's ever been killed on a train. Have you seen Poirot? It's happening all the time. <laughs> that is no saving. Yeah, what a bargain. And then why don't me and him share a bowl of spaghetti like Lady and the Tramp? <laughs> oh, look, it's 30p for the toilet at King's Cross. 15p if we go back to back, isn't it? <laughs> One of the selling points, lockable doors. That is of no use if he's already in there with me. <laughs> All I've got now is a cellmate. <laughs> and then when I got home, right, I had to sleep in my old room. I had to sleep in a single bed. Have you tried this as an adult? Were they always that thin? <laughs> How do we ever stay on the things? Sleep on our bed, I feel I'm lying on a fucking log. <laughs> I was working on my core strength. 
You've been working out and I just sleeping on a single bed. I'm ripped. <laughs> it's like eight hours of Pilates every night. <laughs> I said, well, we could push it next to the wall. Will that help? No. <laughs> no, because then the best case scenario is I roll over and hit a wall. <laughs> well, you slept in. Well, at 8am, I turned over and knocked myself out. <laughs> Also, they don't need to make the duvet small as well. It's the size of a flannel. <laughs> Were you warm? My knee was. <laughs> Just used to preserve my modesty like Adam and Eve. <laughs> I, I don't want to complain. I don't, you know. I, I, I've, I've got a double bed. I don't want to brag. I have got a double bed. I... <laughs> oh, I, I, a couple of people applauded. <laughs> It might, it, might, it might not be. It might be a queen size, it might be a king size. No one knows, do you? All you know is it's one bigger than the sheet you just bought. <laughs> oh, but you'll try and fit it on the bed, won't you? Two hours? So you go, no, I'll just, I don't need all four corners covered with a sheet, do I? <laughs> I'll just go for three, and then the world's most powerful catapult <laughs> in the middle of my bed. Three in the morning, flung into the wall at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> the only tense way to sleep is when you go to a hotel and they've got the uh, two single beds, but they've claimed it's a double, they've just put a sheet over. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a tense night, isn't it? Just lying on the edge of your bed going, do not make a move to the middle for fear of being swallowed by your own bed. <laughs> Go on! <laughs> but my parents, I went back for Christmas. They put a single bed in. I didn't have a single bed when I was a kid. I, um, what I had was a thing called a cabin bed. I don't know if you had one of these, if you didn't have one of these. It's a great idea, right, what it was. Height of, height of a bunk bed, but below it, instead of another, another bed, I had a desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically my parents have made the executive decision that I was more likely to write a letter than have a friend. <laughs> Kids have come over. Can I stay over? No, but you can catch up on your admin, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what seven-year-old needs quick access to a desk in the middle of the night. Just wake up at two in the morning. I need to pen my memoirs. <laughs> I've just climbed down the most painful ladder in the world. <laughs> oh, my God, the pain of that bunk bed ladder. There was nothing like it, was there? Do you want to go to bed? No, I prefer to keep my feet. <laughs> it's like a biblical punishment. You shouldn't have to put your shoes on to go to bed. <laughs> but my mum tried to convince me that the, the, the cabin bed was a good idea. She said, oh, Josh, you should be really pleased you got a cabin bed. It's actually, it's a... Um, very grown-up bed. Now, I'm a grown-up now. That's not proved to be the case. <laughs> like, I've never seen... I don't know if there's any single women here, but if you went back to a guy's house... <laughs> ..and things were going pretty well... ..and he said, do you want to come through to my bedroom? <laughs> Put your shoes back on. go into his room and go, oh, he works hard and he plays hard, doesn't he? <laughs> Got myself a mover and a shaker here, haven't I? <laughs> Quite literally, at that height. <laughs> uh, you've been absolutely lovely, Noel and Paulo. Thank you very much. My name's Josh Whittacombe. Merry Christmas! Hello, this is Josh Whittacombe. Uh, thank you for watching whatever it is you've just watched. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel because I've heard it's an important thing that I'm meant to tell you to do. You'll get clips, updates, and whatever my agent tells me to do for the good of my career, which could only be beneficial for you.